Uh, Sasha Haddon, welcome to Screen Watching. Um, congratulations on a stitch in time. It's, it's a beautiful film. Um, what I want to say is what I found most compelling about the characters and the narrative that you wrote is that there's not a false note amongst it, uh, whether it's Lieber or Duncan or Christine or Hamish. Each of your characters play out as this very fully fleshed out real world people. How did you do that? Tell me about your approach to, to dialogue and character. Well, I start with a, I, I basically start in a very little sort of large, um, very broad. I, I, I tend to work with cards when I'm initially figuring out what the story is and what the characters are. And, and, and lots just played around in my head. I, I actually find for me, writing is more thinking. And then once I've figured it out, then I write it down. Um, in in a sense, mm. uh, and and I I also find this there's, there's certain there's certain logical trajectories that sort of unfold, and as one character does something, there's a there's a logical trajectory of how that affects the other characters, and a lot's just playing around and playing around and constantly seeing how the movement of different characters affects other characters, and so yeah, it's 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 almost mathematical i find um so so yeah i i i really feel the need that there's logic to the way people behave and what's and then and as the other characters in that um in their world interact that affects the way other characters interact it's it's kind of it's almost sounds silly no, it's not at all. To say, but that's how 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 I work. Yeah, it, it, and it was a fairly, from what I understand, it was a fairly quick, quote unquote, quick writing period. It was it. it this wasn't a, a script that spent years and years in development and bounced around half the industry to get notes and all that sort of stuff. It, it, by all accounts, it came together fairly quick. Is that true? Yeah, it was. It was about a. Um, the The first draft was written, in, I think, in about six months. Um, yeah, basically, yeah, we, it did come together. Script-wise, it came together reasonably um, quickly, and we never really we never really changed the script. didn't didn't really change much for that throughout the entire process. And the original script scene numbers still relate to the original edit scene numbers and everything. And and there was a part of the. I, I think in order to pull off. Um, a lot of what we needed to achieve, it was important to really lock lock in a script and make sure that everybody was on board with what we were trying to, um, yeah, what we're trying to achieve, yeah. Sure. And I guess we can't talk any further about In Stitch in Time and not immediately talk about Maggie Blinko. Um, tell us about working with this extraordinary actress and what her age and experience brought to Lieber and the fact that it was her essentially her first sort of starring lead role. Um, tell us about working with this amazing actress. I, I where where she was sim this is her first yeah you're right it's her first leading role in a film and it's happened in quite a you know mature period in her life. And that's where that's where the similar there was this real great similarity and um, it, it was yeah, I think um, um, it was uh, it was very very interesting for her, and it was also something to be sensitive of because uh, I think becoming successful in a sense or finding that lead role can be quite daunting, and um, there's a certain level of sensitivity that we had to be for that and not feel like this, she had this whole pressure of the whole film on her shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, w one thing we one thing we did do was we made sure we had a, a uh, decent length film shoot. And the reason for that was just purely to be comfortable and not feel like the clock's racing behind us. But um, Don, Don never felt that there was any there was a schedule, but what Don felt that we just did a scene and when we're happy with that, we moved on to the next scene. 
we, there was a very, very rigid schedule, but it was it was properly sort of, I guess, designed to take into account that, say, Maggie is this is her first lead role in a film, and to give spaces and to feel and to sort of make sure that everybody felt that there was a there was um, sort of patience on the set. And you mentioned. Don, you, 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 you DOP, the, the great Donald McAlpine. Uh, the behind-the-scenes talent that you pulled together for this project, um, that needs to be addressed. Sue Melican producing, Don shooting, the great Wayne Pashley mixing sound. I interviewed him recently for Oconee. Angela Little composing. That's quite a roster for an indie debut. You must have some serious dirt on these people or they believe that much in the project. <laughs> uh, uh, I think... It- I, I think every I think I'd done enough to kind of convince everyone that I that, that I knew what I was doing. Um, and Don I've known for years, so Don Don just seemed to be on board no matter what. Um, and it was I think part of it was this model that we adopted, which was basically looking at a teaching hospital and seeing that the that the Screen Australia and Film Australia don't don't really provide those training grounds anymore, and we saw an opportunity not only to make a film but to sort of have an opportunity where young people could learn from older people. So it was basically looking at a teaching hospital model, mm. and the reason I keep referring to that is because we can't allow the patient to die. The patient's number one, yep. but it's still, we, you can still have masters and apprentices together in looking after the patient. And that sort of became quite exciting, um, I think, for um, for Don and for um, Wayne and for other people. And um, I I don't, I, I find it difficult to answer that question because I, 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 I don't quite know how to, how to, explain exactly how that unfolded but um but there was a lot of enthusiasm and it was a passion project all around let me just say that i guess <laughs> oh that's an extraordinary sort of analogy it's really that's really really interesting um i guess your film and to a certain extent that the anthology film here out west which released recently you look at the suburbs and tell stories of community and diversity and that's it's a landscape that Australian cinema hasn't always treated respectfully. We're either taking the piss like they did with the castle or we're looking at the ugliest side of it, like the boys. Or What does a stitch in time, what do you hope a stitch in time says about the working in the middle-class masses in the, of, the, of you know, your home ground, the Hills District, and my home ground in northwest Parramatta? I, I think... Um, it. it... I think the film seems to say a lot of different things to different people. It, I wasn't, it, it might seem, I guess, strange, but I wasn't aware that it was as diverse as the as how it's been received. Okay. Um, for me, it's based in Sydney and that's just Sydney. We, I, I do find that Sydney life is probably more diverse than the stories we present at times. Mm. Um, and and I, I think I, I think I I think the film reflects Sydney life pretty pretty accurately in the diverse cultures that we have here. Um, yeah, I, I it just seemed logical to me and logical for the for where the story was was based that we have all these different characters with um, yeah different backgrounds. Uh, one of the loveliest people I've ever met is Glenn Shorrock. I went to a concert of his on the Central Coast. Um, you turn him into a nasty piece of work, but, but someone <laughs> whose, whose journey you, you do come to understand. And, and um, tell me about turning this, this legend of the stage into a, suddenly this brilliant character actor. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Glenn is the most beautiful person you could <laughs> possibly meet. I think he enjoyed, I think he enjoyed, um, I think he enjoyed that. I think he... <laughs> He, yeah, I think he enjoyed um, just being the nasty, <laughs> nasty, nasty guy for it. You know. um, yeah, but yeah, he's he's such a nice, nice guy. But he when it was a little bit in the sense of like Glenn, what what would your life been like 
had you had no success and you're still frustrated and still trying to get that out and what would your life be like if you do have this sort of niggling relationship issues going on and these niggling medical issues going on and and once once you could have sort of he, he can sort of embrace those logical ideas it, it wasn't too it wasn't difficult for him to, to sort of um, find the character, I guess. Yeah. He almost seemed um, a bit of a method actor in a way. Um, he, yeah, he really just found. Uh, yeah, he, I, 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 he, he wasn't technical. He, he just seemed to be more method in, in the way. He, but yeah, it was, it was really a lot of fun, and I think a lot of fun for him as well. Yeah, he drops a good f bomb. He's a good swearer in the film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean. <laughs> I've been told I wrote too many of those in the script. <laughs> <laughs> that was the truthfulness of us. That, that's yeah. what comes out. There was no pandering to, to uh, a ratings board or trying to hit a certain, you know, you, you, these people spoke like real people and that comes through. Um, <laughs> I, I guess finally my last question, mate, is, and I know you've had a taste of this from some of the preview screenings and from the, the festival screenings, but what do you hope the audience take away from a stitch in time is and i know often filmmakers hate to be asked that because audiences can take away what whatever they want from the film but what did you set out to impress upon people with with this film well i think it's um it's that why are we the the, the idea of trying to make it what does that even mean and what does it mean when you've made it and i think um there's something about being creative for each other and I think that's often missed that the, the, the just doing something creatively and having the people around you and in your life, um, you know, feel the benefits of that is missed too much by the pursuit of, 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 of I don't know what, the idea of, of success and the idea of making it. I think it was trying, most of all, it was just trying to look at that and trying to say we should all be creative in some way and we should all appreciate each other's creativity and what and what what we should all feel like we we have something to contribute and appreciate what other people are contributing mate you've made a lovely film a stitch in time is in cinemas from february 17 sasha Haddon, thank you so much i look forward to whatever comes our way from your creativity in the in the months and years ahead so thank you so much oh thank you thank you very much thank you